Hello and welcome my reefer friends to an update for October 2023. It's actually quite a while since I made an update so that's why I thought instead of just making always tiny little videos or I was posting a lot of Instagram, let's make again a real monthly update video from the big tank but now also from the little nano tank where I started up but that's a little bit a longer story so let's take them that in the end. The big tank, the 425 XL, it's doing absolutely amazing. I don't have anything other than one or two minor things I would change here. I think the biggest notable uh, thing or the biggest thing that happened to the tank is a little bit of coral dying off there. I don't know if you see that on that in the middle on the red anacropora. Just from the bottom, from the stem, there's a little bit of tissue dying off. And funny enough, all the other corals are actually fine. But the same string of coral up there, the red one again, all the way in the back. Also a little bit, I don't know if you guys even see that here through all the corals. Um, it's dying off there as well, a tiny little bit. So what I did or what I plan to do is now I um, look into making some more water changes because as you know on that tank I am very very lazy in making any water changes so on that tank maybe for over a year I just changed a couple gallons maybe 10-20 gallons maximum but definitely not uh, weekly water changes of 10% or something like this and I was always lucky because I thought my all for reef keeps up with all the uh, elements and things I'm losing. But it could be that um, just because I didn't really change any salt, uh, I have any kind of issues from that one. But again, it's, it's really just these two red anacroporas. Everything else is doing absolutely uh, fantastic. So let's maybe go um, here on the left side um, from the left to the right. So there in the middle, you see that's the one of the acroporas I have, like a purple acropora. It's growing and growing and growing and it's also starting slightly a little bit to shade some of the other corals below. Um, on the right side there, the green slimer, which a big piece actually broke off quite a while ago. I have that here in the back. And just crazy enough when you look to that left side of the rock structure here, the actual reef rock actually goes only about to the half height of the tank. So everything else you see here is actually all um, just coral who build up over time. I don't know if you see that here on the back. It's just kind of especially that Montipora coral who just is ginormous there. So it builds a whole nother little rock structure and it ha actually happens what in the real life happen with the coral reefs and everything. It's just kind of a coral grows on top of a coral and uh, things get then larger and larger and larger. So that's it's definitely a cool thing. Also when you see all these corals completely baked together. Um, it's crazy. I don't, I almost have no coral warfare other than a little bit uh, on the back there, the green slimer who attacked a little bit the Montipora capricornis. But other than this, uh, not a lot, not a lot going on. Also that, um, I think it's kind of a tenuous acropora. It's doing very good. It's growing and growing and growing in there. The Blue Stylophora, also getting bigger and bigger. I definitely soon make frags of that one. And then something I definitely have to frag or even like almost cut in half or something like this is that green goblin anacropora here in the front. That one really grows out of completely proportion. Like it's, it's way too big and I have to probably almost cut that in half uh, and see how I how I do that the best. The good thing on that one is uh, compared to a bird's nest, it's actually 
pretty sturdy, so you can cut it good with a bone cutter or something like this. Um, it's not that that stuff is just kind of falling apart or something like this, so I maybe then do that. Then also something I wanted to do for a while is that candy cane here, frag some frags of that one, because now it's kind of, it has the shape of a ball and it can, I don't, I cannot really see how it grows now even more. So maybe here on the bottom or something, I just try to cut some of these little heads off and kind of just um, you know, make a couple frags out of it and get a little bit space. Also that guy here, it's a chalice coral, as far as I know. It was almost dying and I was almost about to throw that away a couple months ago, but now it's so much bigger. It was maybe the size of a penny and now it's the size of a um, tiny little fist. What else we have here? Um, maybe also that slime ball Anacropora here, which is almost similar like the one I have over here. It just has a little bit the bigger branches. Also that one, I maybe have to try to cut a little bit off here. That one just gets a little bit, a little bit too big. Um, but otherwise all good, yeah. That's kind of, it's doing very nicely. Red Digitata, absolutely no problem with that one. Then the Gorgonian Coral, it's doing great. I actually thought uh, it's growing a little bit faster. But um, yeah, nothing wrong with the growth here. Definitely attached to the green goblin underneath and it's, it's kind of growing, but I definitely thought it's growing a little, little bit faster. Yeah. Then second problem coral is uh, that green goblin here. It's the same strain like the other one on the left. Uh, also got huge, huge, huge here on that side. And I most likely have to also kind of cut that a little bit down. Then on the back here, I think that's uh, that's actually a, a bird's nest, bird's nest of paradise, something like this. It's just not really growing at all. It just kind of keeps a little bit the, the size, the shape, everything, nothing too crazy, um, which is great. So otherwise, if everything grows like crazy, it just kind of sucks all up my alkalinity out of the tank and then I really have a little bit of space issue here. Yeah. Then uh, one of the brain corals I have here on the ground, also that one is just doing its thing. I had to put it a little bit in the corner because otherwise it starts to sting other corals. And then that one, that short polyp gonipora here, um, I have it also on that little separate rock there. So the goal is actually that the Ganipora or whatever it is takes over that whole rock and um, then doesn't spread out further to the rest of the tank. So that's the that's the idea, but it looks it looks great and especially kind of in the current of the water, like these little you know like if you have all these SPS coral, there's like barely something that moves other than your fish. So I definitely appreciate a little bit movement and uh, that Gonipora gets a little bit movement. And also that Gorgonia coral here is doing a nice, nice little thing. Then uh, earlier today, somebody on Instagram, I'm actually very, quite active on Instagram, so feel free to reach out there, I answer daily lots of questions there and uh, kind of that makes me very happy if I can help somebody. Uh, Herpes Reef actually he asked what's my favorite coral and my answer was it's that Millipora, rainbow Millipora you see right here on the top right. That thing is also like huge huge and it's kind of I feel like it's growing always more and more and more. So it almost looks a little like a little tree, like a little bonsai tree or something and it definitely also shades things underneath but since I underneath have only the some of the Montipora or Capricornis that's actually not even a bad thing that it uh, keeps them a little bit with growing out of control. Then uh, I don't know if you see that tiny little um, what is it 
green, bright green spot there on the base of that other coral. That's also kind of an Acropora. I hope that also takes soon off. It definitely takes its time, but that's okay. Um, got that from a reefer friend here a couple months or may maybe already a year ago. And then that thing here, which I have in the center, I hope you see that. That's apparently a, a red a red slimer or something like this. It's just a little bit the coloration. I don't know, it looks very like a pale red or something. Yeah, I don't know, almost like a gray, but it's growing. Let's see then what's getting out of that one. And then the Project X style of aura there on the back. I definitely, often when some people are visiting here, getting some tracks, they are always asking when I finally have some tracks of that one. But um, yeah, soon it's big enough, then I can make some tracks. And just kind of look at that, look at that reef tank. It's really the red anacropora there on the back. It's maybe half an inch or an inch underneath the water surface. So I don't know, soon the corals is leaving the tank and maybe starting a life as an outside water coral. I don't know. It's actually a good question. What happens when a coral grows out of the water if it just dies off or something like this? Never had that issue, but I'm, I'm so satisfied with my scape I have on that tank here because it really feels the whole tank is just kind of full, full. And I still have that little uh, hole here. So it's still kind of almost like a big arch where also some of the fish can swim underneath. They definitely like that. Here my convict tank. He definitely, I don't know if I get a good shot, of him or his belly. He is fat, he is really fat. He eats like a little pig. And also the Atlantic blue tank. So they are sometimes they are little friends to each other, sometimes they're a little bit more angry, but like usually just, uh, especially when I'm walking around here in the front of the tank, that freaks a little bit out the fish. You also don't see at the moment because I have three chromes, um, to this bar Antias and since I'm walking around here with my camera in front of the tank they're usually rather shy and just stay inside so um, I definitely have more fish at the moment you could think I only have three of them but there's much more and they are hiding in the underneath the coral so that's a cool thing I think that's what fish like places to hide so here with all that coral they can definitely a lot. Then my mushrooms here on the bottom, which are also doing very, very uh, good. The orange mushrooms and here a purple one. In that light, I have now also my room lights on, like the big, big lights here you see here on the, on the top, on the ceiling. So then that's why the coral are not very um, fluorescent at the moment, but it just kind of gives, gives a little bit a better shot in the video if I have these lights on. Then uh, what else we have here? Nothing too crazy. I kind of almost forgot the name of that gold-orange thing there. Uh, yeah, totally forgot the name of that one. Um, and the Cyphastria here on the side doing its thing. Yeah. Nice little side shot here. It's really, as you see, it's really, really filled out. And when you think, oh, oh look, oh, all the fish are out. And as soon as I come, they go and hide again. Two Antias, beautiful little fish, but they always want to go and hide. And they're gone. Yeah. Um, what did I want to say? Yeah, a lot of corals, but they also, um, have its price, so they actually consuming a lot of alkalinity out of the tank. And for the guys who follow me already for a while on that um, little bucket there in the back, that's my all for reef. It's two and a half liters inside, so I exchange that maybe every two weeks. And I dose with my Red Sea Reef dose here on the side. You see it? 
I dose with that guy um, 160 milliliters per day. So that's quite a lot uh, because the corals just consume so much alkalinity. And then here in the, in the front, uh, great aquaforest air scrubbers, scrubber from my friends at Aquaforest. Um, absolutely love that one, especially because it has that water reservoir on the bottom. So I always have kind of some moisture inside that keeps my media a little bit moist. And that kind of makes just the scrubber, scrubber so much more effective. So if you have a CO2 scrubber, definitely um, look into to keep your media a little bit moist because that kind of gives you way, way more life out of your uh, media. Otherwise, that's usually depleted in one or two weeks, but with having some moisture underneath, it can go up to a month. I think usually I change that every month, what's inside. Then here on the left, that big guy here, the red thing, it's a Pentair UV sterilizer. It's a very, very big one and it has only 25 watts, but um, I think the, the key thing on the sterilizer is the uh, the light per volume of water and there's definitely a lot of water in that sterilizer so that's what makes it effective then. Then my proud part of my tank, the left side, and I have to warn you a little bit, I actually didn't really clean the reef tank this time at all other than I just cleaned a little bit the, the glass. It's my frag tank and you see I have here a couple cool frags inside. And always here and there on our local, um, here in Nashville, I post um, some pictures on Facebook and there's always a couple people who love to pick up some corals for a good price. So if you're in the area, you let me know, come to me and you can pick some of them up. Look especially here that aqua in the front like it was it's encrusting all over the frag rack so yeah come pick up that stuff but um everybody always says like oh my gosh like your reef tank is so clean there's like absolutely no algae inside and that's actually true on the top you see even when i go here and try to get some pictures of the rock work that thing is almost blank there's not one little algae piece on it obviously on the coral algae cannot really stick on the coral but it can stick on the rock and it's it's super clean as well as the sand bed i actually didn't really clean the sand bed so that's why you see it's a little bit uneven all the time when i clean more the tank i make it a little bit more even from the sand but because i have I let both power heads run 100%, so there's quite a lot of flow inside, and due to the flow, it's also moving the sand a little bit around. But no coral on the top, uh, coral, uh, algae on the top, but a lot of algae here on the bottom, and you see like there, especially around that um, end piece of the hose, and also on the skimmer. It's just kind of, there's a lot of algae build up in, in here and also here on the ground, all kinds of stuff going on. It's actually pretty thick here. It's almost like a carpet on the bottom. So for some reason, most of my algae just sticks to the sump. I have a Reflet 50 in here and uh, that's running also eight hours the opposite time so when the lights on the top are off during the night that thing is on now it's on just because i'm recording here that video that would be usually off uh, you wouldn't see that um, yeah very interesting very interesting i actually just when i look at the time i actually thought i might make today a little bit of shorter video now we're already on 20 minutes so let's move quick over to the tank I'm maybe less proud at the moment. It's my little uh, Max Nano. And um, let me click, quick close here the door. And um, I had some live rock from which I had previously in the 425XL. 
which I didn't use anymore. So I put that thing here inside. So I also tried to kind of fill the whole tank out with the rockwork because on that tank, I actually have a little bit of different plan. On that one, I would like to put in only anemones. And since anemones don't really add anything, like coral, they don't grow up. That's why I want to make sure I fill out the tank with rock and then the anemones can attach to the tank and uh, to the rock and multiply. And also my two clowns, I had them always in the here in the 425. And as you maybe know, clownfish are not really a schooling fish, so they, or at least with their own species, they are rather kind of alone. And um, if they find an anemone in the sea, they usually just stick to that anemone and don't move uh, or swim around the sea. They just stick with the anemone and that's their home. And then they stay there. So that's why I gave them a little home here in my quarantine tank. It was almost kind of a little bit, uh, yeah, just keeping that tank as a quarantine tank didn't really make a lot of sense. And I still had that cool light that Castle AP, AP 700. So I decided to go with a, an enemy only tank. But I'm still running here to cycle. Um, that thing is maybe running a month. And you see inside there's a lot, a lot of craziness going on there on the rock. Um, but I just ride it out at the moment. I maybe did the mistake in the beginning that I took a lot of water from the other tank. And since in the other tank I have a lot of nutrients, all these nutrients obviously immediately turned into algae and cyano and all kinds of stuff. Uh, because in that tank there is not such an ecosystem and bacteria uh, at the moment. The fish are inside since like two or three weeks, so that's why um, it's, it's really cycling like crazy. Then also here, sand is a little bit blowing around because I added that narrow three power head there on the back because just with the stock grid turn, I don't really get enough flow, so I added that one. But um, yeah, keep, keep posted on that one. Um, subscribe to the channel, then you don't miss an update on that one. Uh, it will be definitely a cool little adventure to bring that tank uh, to a similar level like I have the other one. But just kind of because a lot of people maybe look at that video and they are newer to the hobby and then they maybe only see that tank and they think like, oh my gosh, like how can you ever have such a perfect tank? I have algae, I have cyano, I have everything a little bit. And here you see the reality. It's just normal. I have the same issues and I have to deal with it kind of the same way. And the way I deal with it is I just leave it alone. I change some water, try to not overfeed the fish. That's it. And maybe in one or two months, uh, when then the thing's cleaning up a little bit, or maybe even in a couple of weeks, I then add a, an enemy inside. But I didn't really want to add anything before I have it more stabilized. Um, I measured the water parameters. They're almost zero for, new, uh, for nitrate and phosphate, which is not really surprising because all the algae here inside is definitely uh, sucking these nutrients up. Um, I have also the little skimmer that comes with the aquarium. That one is running 24-7. It pulls out some good gunk because these the two clownfish, they are definitely have already a little bit of size, so they make quite some poop and dirt and the skimmer can pick that outside. Yeah, but check back. Or check my Instagram channel. I always um, post a lot of videos and updates there. Then you see how it goes with the Nano. And also if I have a good idea to frag these corals here. Um, yeah, if you have any questions or something you would like to see on the next one, let me know. Reach out to me here on YouTube or on my Instagram channel. And then I try to make another one again in around a month, just to show you a little bit the, the updates and the progress I make with the system. Thank you very much for your attention and have a great week.